Ladies and gentlemen, I am Tosh Berman, and you're watching an episode of Tosh Talks. I'm your host, obviously. And today I want to speak about or talk about Robert Frank. Robert Frank is a Swiss photographer and filmmaker. And in the late 40s and early 50s, he did a remarkable photo book called The Americans, which Jack Kerouac, the great American beat writer, quote unquote, uh, wrote the introduction to the book. And what's interesting about The Americans is that it's a, a collection of photographs by Frank as he traveled across the country uh, during the early 50s, maybe a little bit of the late 40s, definitely post-war years. And um, what's remarkable about, about this book is Frank being a foreigner from Switzerland, capturing uh, his take on what America is. America is many things. And um, I think of an American who was born and raised, bred in America, will have a different take. But uh, Frank had a particular European take on America. And his Portrait of Americans is a book that's still in print to this day. Um, there's only probably two great living photographers on this planet right now. Uh, one is Robert Frank and the other one is William Eagleston for different purposes and reasons. And of course there are many, many great photographers, but those two to me are most like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones that we're talking about in the 1960s era. Um, <clears throat> Frank is a, is a photographer. His work is remarkably remarkable and also His take on the world is very interesting because he's a bohemian, he's a European who's also bohemian, meaning he's not part of the establishment, he's not part of the established world. And therefore, I think a lot of people think of him obviously being associated with the beat generation or the beats. Uh, of course, he knew Allen Ginsberg, and of course, obviously, he knew Jack Kerouac. And... Um, Robert Frank, I think, is in his 90s now, like 93, 94, something like that. But um, he has consistently made great photographs and great photo books. His main publisher at this time is Steidel. Steidel does incredible photo books, and they also uh, uh, do photo books by William Eagleston as well. And if you see a Steidel on a book you know you're getting a good photo book, getting the best that's possible of its time and place. Anyway, <clears throat> besides being a photographer, Robert Frank is also a filmmaker. He made his own films. And we're talking about not uh, mainstream Hollywood movies or any, not even European mainstream films, but he made independent films um, under his own control, under his own power. And um, Steidel, the, the, the photo publisher, has put together a credible collection called Robert Frank Film Works. Steidel is the publisher. And this is the actual case that comes in, like a little suitcase. And this reminds me very much. This has every Robert Frank film except for two. Um, one is... Um, <clears throat> Uh, a film, a documentary film he did on the Rolling Stones called, excuse my language, Cocksucker Blues. And the other one is called, um, um, I might just forget what it's called, Sugar, Sugar, Sugar Mountain. I'll, I'll double check on that. But anyway, those are the only two films not shown or not in this box. But all his other films are here. And it comes in a carrying case. Candy Mountain. And um, so here is like a handle. It very much reminds me of, 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 uh, of Marcel Duchamp's box where he, carried, he had his entire artwork all in a, and he miniaturizes all his work so he could carry it in a carrying case, in, in, a, in a, uh, uh, a case. And here Robert Frank 
sort of did the same thing, or at least Dydal did the same thing, where they took all his films on DVD and put it in a box. So you have the complete, you know, you have a life work in this case here. I can take it, I can take the lunch with me, you know? It's, of course, printed upside down, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. So anyway, I'm going to open this box, and you'll see a close-up later. Or if it's facing me. You open it. You see Robert Frank Film Works. And it opens up. You'll see here eight DVDs. Now, really, in actuality, there's four DVDs of material. One is in the um, NTSC format, and the other is in the PAL format. I believe the PAL format is European, and NTSC is in the uh, United States and uh, parts of Asia format. If you have, a, if you have a, 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 a regional free DVD machine, you can play either one, but most people if you purchase a DVD machine through a department store or for a stereo store, more likely if you're in America, it's NTSC. So you can't play the PAL format in that DVD machine. If you have a regional free machine, it doesn't matter. So Steidl, being an international company, has both PAL and NTSC, very, very generous. So you get this. So the films here, um, uh, there's 27 films, and the, what I have seen, I only saw, uh, uh, I didn't see every film here yet, but what I have seen is Pull My Daisy, which is the film, his first film, he made that in 1959, and it was made a co or co-directed by Alfred Leslie, who is a, uh, a, a painter who's still with us. So that was a co-direction between Robert Frank and Albert Leslie, and then onward, he made films by himself. So the other one is called The Sin of Jesus, which is 38 minutes long, made in 1961. Okay End Here, 33 minutes, made in 1963. And uh, Me and My Brother, 85 minutes, feature length, uh, made in 1968. And of interest would be, I think, if you're interested in the beat generation or beat p cultural people, uh, the interest would be Pull My Daisy, and the other one will be uh, me and my brother. Uh, Pull My Daisy is a remarkable film. It's a, um, it's a film about um, sort of a, a casual get-together of, uh, of personalities, all of them part of the beat generation or part of the beat you know, grouping at the time. And this includes um, um, Gregory Corso, the poet, and uh, Allen Ginsberg, the poet, both poets. And uh, Jack Kerouac did the narration over it. It's credited as a script by Jack Kerouac, but my understanding is that the movie was totally improvised. And Larry Rivers is also in this film, the great uh, painter and artist. And um, Daphne Siebrig, this is a surprise to me. I didn't realize it till uh, just a couple uh, days ago. Plays the wife, who's a painter. It's that this all the story takes place in Daphne Seabrig's um, uh, loft apartment in the Bowery, and Larry Rivers, who is a uh, who is a he works like in a factory. I can't remember exactly what his job is, but he's not an artist. He works in a factory, and I've heard that's that that. that the Larry Rivers character is based on uh, Jack Kerouac's great friend and sort of muse and inspiration, Neil Cassidy, who's also a work, like a labor worker. Anyway, it's interesting to point out. <clears throat> so Ginsburg, Corso, and some others come and hang out at this house. And, um, and there's goofing off, basically. It's a half an hour of them goofing off in this house. A bishop shows up who is not the bishop that we sort of know what we think of a bishop, but a character who is a, re a religious figure, bishop, uh, shows up. And um, he is a funny character. And, um, and, and what's interesting, they just shot it, I believe. 
And then after they shot it, Kerouac had his own voiceover over it, explaining what's happening, who these characters are. And the brilliance is not only the film itself, but it's actually, it's very much to me a, a Jack Kerouac project because it's his viewpoint more than anything else. And it's, it's, it's Kubrick is so funny and so witty and his description is so on the spot, like perfect. It's kind of amazing. It's an amazing piece of work by Kerouac as well as Frank and uh, Alfred Leslie. And um, it's a great film. Pull My Daisy is a classic beat film. Um, and then The Sin of Jesus is, is quite is interesting. It has like religious implications. And OK ends here is very much like an Antione film of the early 60s about like a relationship that's kind of splitting apart or alienation. And it's actually very good. Me and my brother, going back to the beat subject, is more about Allen Ginsberg and uh, Allen Ginsberg's lover at the time, Peter Opskowski. And his brother, actual brother, who is a, who's schizophrenic. And it sort of deals with that subject matter and goes on. Anyway, there's 27 films here. Remark, I mean, it's just a remarkable collection. It's going to take me about a year to get through all of this, personally. So you got the DVDs. Then you get a book called Robert Frank Films. This is a whole collection of essays on these films. It's a, like a filmography as well as still photographs of all sorts. And, um, yeah, everything here is like a still film from... from from the film, from his films. It's from my brother and I. And um, it includes the cast, it includes uh, four or five essays that are very interesting and very informative and um, are very interesting. And um, what I found interesting here, you get like a, like the, you get a, a good like sort of uh, a biography of Robert Frank and towards the end. And then it goes, there's a segment of each one talking about each film, like a little essay about the plot, who's in who in each film, and that's equally fascinating and something you would need. And the movie I was thinking about is Candy Mountain, <clears throat> which is a film he made with uh, Rudy Wurzler, who, Rudy Wurzler, in my world, is like a great novelist. But he also wrote screenplays and uh, worked with Robert Frank at least three films. And Candy Mountain is not in this set, unfortunately. But that's the other film. I forgot the title, so I just want to make a note of that. And, um, and another person I want to make a note of, going back to Pull My Daisy, is the person who plays the, um, the bishop is Richard Bellamy. And Richard Bellamy is a major uh, art dealer in the f uh, late 50s and early 60s, or throughout the 60s in uh, Manhattan, New York at the time. And there's actually a great um, biography on, uh, on Bellamy that I really recommend, and um, interesting people. And the other people in, in Pull My Daisy is also Alice Neal, a fantastic artist. Um, and uh, Larry Rivers, as I said before. And the only professional, again, professional actress or actor is Dolphine Seabrick, who uh, later ended up in uh, Last Year at Marinbad. She's the main woman in Last Year at Marinbad, and she worked with other people like Bumwell and other people. So it's, you know, it's a, I don't know if it's a coincidence or whatever, but it's kind of amazing that Dolphine Seabrick is in this world of the beat scene of sorts. So this book is a must to read. It works with the films as well as a separate document. And then here you have a Robert Frank, Me and My Brother, which is the script and dialogue from the film, with some film stills, of course. Beautifully designed and put together by Steidel Press and Robert Frank himself, I believe. Remarkable. Remarkable. And then you got photos by John Cohen, Pull My Daisy. John Cohen's a fascinating figure himself. John Cohen is like a bohemian presence of that late early 50s to early 60s. And he's one of the first guys to actually shoot Bob Dylan in Manhattan. Uh, when Bob Dylan was doing the hardcore folk music scene, 
Colin was there. And Colin traveled throughout the South documenting um, the, like the folk and blues players of that time period. And Colin shot the publicity stills or, you know, the set scenes in uh, Pull My Daisy. So this is what that is. Uh, here's a great picture of all the, all the criminals on hand. And we have here um, Larry Rivers at Work, <laughs> great book. And then we actually have Pull My Daisy, the story by Car Kerouac. And here is the actual, the dialogue that Kerouac wrote for the film. So you get one, two, three, four, books, including the DVD set, four DVDs of like 27 films. And again, um, if you're going to be a lunatic like I am, you must have The Americans, the book by Robert Frank. We also need this collection. This is very essential work by, uh, by this artist. And um, he, Robert Frank was in the right place, right time, right zone, right everything. And um, you're not going to find a better source of material about the beat generation or the beats. There are other sources, like, you know, including my dad's seminar culture and stuff like that. But um, this is actually, in the New York sense or New York City sense, a really essential work of, uh, of art and I think of historical uh, importance. And uh, Robert Frank, Film Works, published by Steidel. And I am Tosh Berman, and this is Tosh Talks. Thank you. <laughs>